moment when the, Poli when the Polish embassy arrives for the Polish talk, this is, this is the moment to start. Katarzyna, you, you, you gave the signal. <laughs> so, uh, welcome back again. We continue 1989 in a day. We move on to August 24, the first non-communist government since 1948 elected in an Eastern European country, and this country was Poland. And as it has to be the case with Poland, from Warsaw, we obviously uh, followed that rule, which is a general people. So we have Alexandra Gwos from the Jagiellonian University in uh, Krakow in conversation with uh, Andrzej Waszkiewicz, sociologist from University of Warsaw. We arranged that, that I will start because I am a new fellow. I came only the day before yesterday, so let me take the opportunity and introduce myself to my fellow fellows. Uh, yes, I, I happen to be the head of the Institute of Sociology, but on sabbatical. And um, I'm not much of a sociologist, in fact. I'm a historian of ideas. And I am a boomerang fellow, one of the numerous boomerang fellows in this institute. Uh, the Institute hosted me uh, 12 years ago and was working on my habilitation book, which stands somewhere over there. Uh, and and uh, I think it's so much for myself and now to the point. Uh, we were asked kindly but sternly to start our talks with uh, personal recollections. And I must admit, I had very few. Instead, I remember very well the 4th of June, the day of the first semi-free elections in the former Warsaw Pact. And I cast my vote early in, in the morning and stood all the day in front of the, the polling station with the banner how to vote solidarity, keeping in my wallet um, insurance certificate issued by, by the Solidarity Civic Committee just in case the police approached us. And, and it made my day, actually. But the 24th of August, I spent on traveling around. So I came home late, watched the late news, and so Tadeusz Mazowiecki, just elected the prime minister, uh, stretching out his arms and showing V sign from the left to the right and from the left to the, to the right. So my impression was that he was acting like the pope, <laughs> uh, showing this gesture, not to the chamber, but to uh, urbi et orbi, to the city and the world. And, and this picture frozen in my mind, and it was repeated many, many, many times. So I, I can't remember if I had any exalted feelings, uh, although I, I, I had good reasons to have some, because I got married shortly before, I finished my studies, uh, one faculty, and, and on top of that, I got the driving license, the very first <laughs> attempt which is not a piece of cake in, in, in big cities in Poland. So one would say of a perfect timing to step into mature life uh, into a, a new country. Uh, so it is. I don't have, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, uh, any personal recollections of this event, but I have many impressions. And uh, my perception of this Something event... Something wrong with the microphone. Is it? Uh, oh, so what should I do? <laughs> it's okay? Oh, okay. Uh, so my perception of this event is quite uh, ambiguous, uh, I have to admit. Uh, ranging from a very positive to quite confused one, which uh, is rather typical for a contemporary Polish mindset, I would say, not excluding or maybe ex especially young generation which is dependent on the, on the narrasis of others. Mm. Uh, but maybe before, 
it's, it's ranging between very positive and very confused ones, and, and this positive, uh, very, like, first, very positive gut impression, I would say, it is granted, it's something I can call maybe personal historical memory, which is based on my lectures, on the narratives I grew up with, uh, on, my, uh, on the movies I watched, on the broad this retro TV broadcast I also watched, as opposed to the uh, public historical discourse and political memory as it is shaped right now in Poland. S and I think it's, it's worth it to be <laughs> Uh, sincere about this ambiguity from the very beginning, but before getting into any controversies, I would like to uh, expose this very bright side, which is my first impression of this event, uh, which is not only very positive, it's very empowering and very fascinating and, and so very full of hope, uh, especially that I think about these dates and of, of forming the first government and the preceding elections as uh, ground that is this larger, as an <coughs> epitome of this larger process of democratization in Poland, wi uh, of, of Poland, which began at the beginning of the 1980s with a solidarity movement, and which then formed this little nuclei of democracy uh, in the factories, in, at universities, at, at, uh, in private houses, in churches, and which then formed this social dynamics which, which as I imagine, had to blow up this, uh, this uh, iron frames of, of existing order. And um, this bottom-up uh, uh, civic dynamics is what really fascinates me about this, about this date and, and mm. about this process, because it's, so also because it's so different from what we experience right now and what is what how politics and how public sphere is, is shaped. Uh, there is one book which I think very well captures this, this process of uh, inner democratization of Poland. It's Bronisław Świdecki's book, Gdańsk uh, mm. and Athens, which title may seem a little bit bold and far-reaching, but I think that it really shows what happened, that there was this new quality, that, is, that, were, that there was this radical novelty in, in, in human relations and, and this... Uh, kind of movement in the human spirit, new quality of, of communication, which then, which then just had to, had to bring new quality in political life. Uh, and this experience of, of this inner democratization, this human flourishing also in the public sphere is something what, what, what I guess unites Gdańsk and Athens and which differs my generation, my experience of my generation from, from yours, mm -hmm. because uh, for us democracy is given. It's, it's yeah. Yeah. But it's a valuable gift, but uh, also something we can be very capricious about, and we indeed are when, when one regards the uh, bottom's turnout of, uh, of, this, uh, of this year's um, elections, last month, mon month's elections, which which uh, were the youngest generation was, was the least to vote and the, the turnout was uh, almost 20% lower than the average one. Mm -hmm. mm. And uh, m m maybe we can tackle this issue later, but uh, maybe one of the reasons is the fact that we are deprived of this very formative and very beautiful experience yeah. of, of touching the core of freedom mm -hmm. as as, uh, as you did, and also um, experiencing public sphere as very ethical sphere and a good place, place of solidarity. And what I particular, particularly love about this, this period and this date is was also its very creative touch, in that sense that, um, of course, the revolutions of solidarity was uh, was uh, prepared not only by, by political leaders, but by intellectuals, by priests, by artists. <laughs> And what, what gave it, firstly, it's very non-violent and very ethical touch, but on the other hand, also with very creative touch. And um, for example, I haven't seen a better political design than this poster. Okay. No, this Gary poster. Cooper at Hyde. No. No, no. No. Ah, yes. And also, I also... It's carrying a badge, solidarity badge. Mm -hmm. on, uh, you see there. 
And also, I just really love uh, the story how uh, com the end of communism was announced in Poland. It's very famous by us, but I'm not very sure that if it if it's so famous at international area. And I, but I, and I just love it because it was not uh, any political figure who, who announced it, but it was a young woman and an actress who was interviewed of a day on the of elections on television uh, on her career. And she just took this opportunity to say something like, oh, on the, on the day like this, I don't really care about my career uh, because ladies and gentlem gentlemen, today is the day when, when the communism in Poland has ended. And she said it with this really radiant smile and shining eyes and uh, so full of joy. And I think it's one of the best things I, I, I ever saw in te on, tele on, on television because it's still circulating and it must have required so much intelligence and so much courage and so much wit and every time I'm seeing such things I'm coming to this painful conclusion that my parents were cooler than me and then this generation had something some kind of political sensitivity and some kind of political Im imagination which we lack uh, for some reasons and it also very well symbolized what the, the whole solidarity the whole movement was that it was not uh, this, the, this, this process as I was speaking about, this inner democratization and this somehow inner freedom which, which had many liars, not only political but also artistic personnel and this is one of, the, of, of its symbols. And uh, speaking about this, this very empowering experience, I would have a question uh, to you. Uh, if yeah. you have, um, what is your most beautiful <laughs> or most empowering uh, experience of freedom uh, from that period? It doesn't have to be the election day, maybe something, something from the whole period. And asking the question, I have in mind uh, one story which I once read about, uh, about uh, one journalist uh, crossing the uh, border of Gdańsk shipyard at the mm -hmm. time of solidarity when he was um, it's maybe shocking, but he was intoxicated with freedom I, and mm. he had all the uh, bodily reactions of intoxication because the, as he recalls, the atmosphere outside was so different from the atmosphere inside that it was so novel, it was so different that mm. it just was caused this shocking reaction yeah. to... I, I yeah, um, before I answer your question, could you repeat what the famous actress exactly said on the day? Uh, if, if you can't remember, I will do that. I, I can remember. She yeah. said what I... Uh, she <laughs> said, on the 4th of June, on the 4th of June, the communist in Poland is over. On the 4th of June. And that is the sentence I would like to... I'd like to start answering your question. Because uh, half of the... Uh, many Poles would be surprised and deeply disappointed. Uh, look, having... having um, having a look at the list and not finding the 4th of June at the, at the top of it. Why? Shame on you, Ludger. <laughs> we, the Poles, the Poles uh, have the pride to have triggered the whole process. It, it didn't happen on the Austria-Hungarian border. It happened at the shipyard oh, <laughs> a decade ago, or it happened at the first semi-free election. You want to be Yes, <laughs> <laughs> next time, <laughs> next time. <laughs> and then the point is that the, the, the particular day you asked me for was just exactly the, the 4th of June. The 4th of June, the, let me repeat it, the, the, the day of the first semi-free election, semi-free election in the Warsaw Pact, somehow overshadowed the 24th of August, the day when Tadeusz Mazowiecki was elected prime minister. Why? Now, we take it simply for granted that forming government follows the election victory, as it were natural in, in uh, 30 years ago. No, it wasn't. It was a dramatic change. It was a twist of history. But somehow we <coughs> tend to underestimate the importance of the day, of this particular day. We, we, we stick to the 4th of June as the day of the break, as the, our D-Day. Why? Because on that day we defeated communism. We defeated the enemy. On the, four, on the 24th of August, we made our enemy our coalition partner. 
The first one is a kind of military experience. We defeated the enemy. The second one is a political experience. It's quite a different tradition. And the Poles are not good at politics at all, believe me. <laughs> so it does it fit to the whole tradition of the Polish way to independence. Yeah? That's w I'm not offended because I understand the politics as politics. Uh, but uh, my country folks uh, certainly would be. Um, but why is this, uh, um, this experience of freedom you mentioned so uh, rare to find in, in the population? Because uh, you see the Mazowiecki's government uh, is well, it is connected with democracy, freedom, and all the beautiful things that follow, but not always with that. It is also associated with uh, Balcerowicz shock therapy, economic reform. And this reform uh, has brought about the new liberal capitalism. And it also associated uh, with the, the so-called thick line that Tadeusz Mazowiecki wanted to draw to separate the future from the past. And it was, from the very beginning, deliberately misinterpreted as a kind of oblivion, as a kind of forgiveness to the people of the old regime and the promise they would go unpunished. So there is a black legend of this government as well. There's a black legend of the round table talks. There's a black legend of the like Valenza engagement and leadership. Um, for the proponents of this black legend, like Valenza was simply a secret service collaborator. One of the many. It just happened to him to be the, the leader of the union. And in fact, it was not that, that uh, somebody else. Uh, so uh, the, the polls are divided over this issue. The polls are divided, and uh, it's not for everyone, as it's for us, uh, that we associate this with, with the, all these good feelings. We have got these good feelings and good memories of that. No. Um, Please. But before maybe we get into this division problem, Sadly, yeah. I would like to get back to the, <laughs> to the date. And uh, if, if you, uh, I have a question. Do you, do you on the 4th of, 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 uh, of uh, uh, June, did you really expect it? Did you really expect the solidarity to win? Because I was once reading a Professor Andrzej Zoll uh, recollection, and he was engaged in this in this uh, committee ensuring the fairness of of elections. And he said that three days uh, before mm. before elections, the party uh, issued some kind of um, news, like the first fake fake news or the propaganda news in the med media, that whoever will will vote for the civic committee uh, will uh, he, this voice would be invalid. Of course, the, the society did not uh, follow, mm -hmm. but it only shows the fact that they were that, that the communists they were not really expecting this 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 unanimous uh, victory. And mm -hmm. was it so obvious? Because it's for obvious me now. But was it obvious for you, or were you surprised that uh, the, the landslide uh, victory was? Uh, not expected by any, anybody but me, I would say. <laughs> no, no, there's a trick, of course. Um, you know, the, mm, uh, well, it's a, it's a good question because it, it shows how the, why the polls are divided. Because the, the way the, uh, the power was handed over divides the population. I mean, there are people who take it for granted that there was some plot between the old elite and the new elite. Mm -hmm. And the round table talks was a nice and day to, uh, to, to, to run the things as they are. And, but the election victory, um, well, let me remember, um, let me um, quote the data. 
um, there was a deal there was, um, that uh, solidarity will run for uh, 165 seats and solidarity leaders resisted for being given a quota of seats. <coughs> the, they insisted on the free elections on this limited range of uh, seats in the parliament. And they won all of them in a free suffrage. And there was completely free elections to the Senate, the higher chamber. All by one, taken by solidarity. So that was, it seems to be the power of solitary was uh, enormous. But in fact, the support for solidarity was not so great. And we can see it if we compare the numbers of the votes cast for communist parties to the lower chamber. They were next to, soli next to solidarity candidates. They scored between 20 and 25%. So why is such a big difference between the hurrah victory and the support, and the balanced support for, for solidarity and, and communist party? Because the election, it's as, as simple as can be, the election law it was majority rule. The first come, um, the winner. So um, and no, hardly ever, there was only one, one social scientist uh, who claimed to have expected this. That was a, a rational choice theory, Marek Kaminski, who published in uh, 1997 an article in a Polish sociological paper. Um, uh, and he explained what would have happened if there, weren't, if there hadn't been the majority rule. Solidarity could have grabbed only 145 seats. Not enough to make the coalition with the former allies of the communist parties. So what would have happened then? There would be a, a business as usual. The communist party would, um, make the, would, uh, would make the coalition with the former allies and there would, be, there would have been a tug of war between solidarity and opposition and, uh, and, uh, and, the, and the government, commun still communist government. But why solidarity made such a concession and uh, were happy with 36% of the, of the seats in the parliament? Because those seats gave them a veto to the, on the constitutional issues. So. That was a blocking coalition, not the winning coalition, as the rational choice theorists say. And that was enough. So solidarity leaders didn't expect it as well. Actually, many of them were scared when this proposal came out that we will make their government. Very few wanted to get involved. I have some friends and uh, relations with, uh, with uh, and I remember that the talks with the people, with my, actually my, my, my colleagues, uh, whose parents were uh, involved in the process of forming government, and we were not so happy as we can think today. So this, this joy was uh, kind of overshadowed and, and uh, diminished by the, by the fear, the fear. Remember that uh, the limit, the, the, well, say that the, the, the horizon is our limit, but not, it wasn't like that. Uh, I asked the ca solidarity candidate, what are you expecting for after the elections? And they said, the case of Finland, that's what we can afford. And probably nothing more. Um, but what had happened uh, um, outside of Poland also um, promoted the Polish change. So, but we, tend to overestimate the victory of the 4th of June and underestimate uh, what happened, everything what happened abroad, especially Perestroika. And yeah, if, it, if you are happy with my answer. Mm, yes, you, 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 yeah, the, the controversiality of this date uh, 
it's uh, nowadays uh, above all political because there will be pe people who will be saying that of yeah. course there are some that to, that it led to too many compromises with the members of the uh, ancien regime and so on and it's it's the it's the heart of a controversy political controversy now but before getting into the political controversies i would like i would like to ask you about because as i said what really fascinates me about this period, about these 10 years which led to this election and then forming of this government is the shape of the public sphere and the shape of politics and, and which didn't, which s seemed somehow free from the Machiavellian mm. curse. It reminded mm. more politics in Hannah Arendt's sense, the place of deliberation and free discussion. And there was this thrill which was then observed of the on the faces of actresses and, and yeah. other, other like, Every every person, ordinary people, and uh, there is uh, uh, in this very beautiful and very nostalgic book, uh, uh, Solidarity, uh, uh, an unfulfilled project of a Polish democracy. Uh, another sociologist from Warsaw, mm -hmm. Professor Janusz Krzemiński, he speaks precisely about this deliberative momentum and this uh, this mm. this civic friendship as the heart of democracy, as the treasure of democracy. And he says that af just after the uh, elections of, uh, uh, of this uh, unanimous victory, it was very quickly lost somehow. Yeah. And he also says very interesting thing, uh, um, uh, because uh, at the, uh, uh, apparently, as he recalls, at the beginning of the 90s, there were massive uh, wave of strikes, uh, hunger strikes in Poland, um, mm. which he interprets no. Not so important as he thinks. I no. m maybe not, but still he interprets it as as the sign of frustration of this force and some kind of um, misrespect, or because it, it he interprets it as as a, as a pe as people's um, desperate attempt to regain the voice uh, in in discussion mm. on public matters, which was then min misrespected, and also there is a very similar th thesis uh, set forth by by uh, American poli uh, political scientist David Ost in this uh, book, Defeat of Solidarity, um. uh, Anger and Politics in Post-Communist uh, Countries. And I, that's why I, 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 my question is, is this 4th of June or 24th of August such a happy day? In that sense that, uh, but not in the political sense, but in this, uh, in, in sense of re relations between politics mm -hmm. and, and society, maybe more could have been done to, to somehow save this, this deliberative mm -hmm. momentum and, and not let it to turn into the anger. No, I completely disagree. <laughs> I'm okay. happy to completely disagree with both Kreminski and, okay. and, and um, my friend uh, my David Ost. David Ost. Yeah. Uh, there was a truly Machiavellian moment, the round, round table talks, because solidarity was not so strong and the government was not so weak. And this government uh, didn't estimate properly the strength of solidarity, but they tended to overestimate it. Whereas solidarity leaders properly estimated the weakness of their own movement and a little bit overestimated the power of the government. So actually there were uh, no side, no part of the talks had then um, uh, social approval to sit to the negotiating table. Solidarity, where solidarity had been the solidarity rank and file stronger, the solidarity leaders wouldn't be allowed to sit at the table and negotiate with the enemy. Where the had been the communist party stronger, their leaders wouldn't have been allowed to sit at the table with the CIA-sponsored enemy. Both sides were weak, weak. Uh, uh, they were equally powerless, I would say. This is something which uh, Samuel Huntington nicely shows in his analysis in the third w way of, of democratization. That was the precondition of the, of the negotiations, that nobody could win the other. So, in fact, they were both traitors. They were traitors of both sides. 
And because the um, solidarity leaders uh, took the, the myth to the, of the great solidarity to present themselves to the government and to the population as the representatives of the social side. So the representative of the whole society uh, and not the representative of the, of the uh, trade union. And the, the, those who sit on the government side, they were also traitors because they, they uh, weren't permitted to sit at the table. I mean, the, the grassroots of, of, of uh, communist parties were strongly against. We can't remember, but they're strongly against. Um, and the uh, traitors, in, in, well, they committed the highest possible crime. They, commi they, they betrayed the, the, the Marxist ideologist I mean, uh, ideology. They talked to the, to the, to the uh, opposition. And that was the first political event since at uh, the end of the war, actually, I would say. That was a political event, the truly Machiavellian. And, uh, you, you know, um, well, people were not very happy with this, 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 this agreement, of course. But those who, who, who were not, I would say, so intoxicated with the Republican spirit, they believed it's something, it's hungering around. But in fact, it, 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 it was not. Because the, the, the decade of 1980 was the saddest decade in Poland. The, sp the Republican spirit of the 1980 completely evaporated. People turned into private life, into business, small business, and things like that. Not incidentally, we have baby boom in the early, in the early 80. <laughs> so that was a, a mood of withdrawal rather than uh, enthusiasm for the change. It came only later. It came only later, and I think this, this importance on the Mazowiecki's government consists in this point, and it, 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 it evokes some, some enthusiasm and the, 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 um, the readiness for change, but not before, but before. But why, why was it so sad, and why this Republican spirit evaporated? That was exactly my, my question, because I was somehow maybe looking for, for reasons in the politics itself and how it was made. And shortage of, the shortage of everything. I mean, people were engaged in, in keeping uh, ends meet. No. And then um, the economic crisis, that was the backdrop of the, of the, of the, the round table talks. And the strikes you mentioned, it was something insignificant. I can, I can tell you about this firsthand because I was kind of involved in the student strike. I mean, it was funny, more funny than serious actually. <laughs> we actually, we kind of provoked the police to attack us, but they didn't want to. <laughs> no, that was the old system collapsing, but it was collapsing like the godfather. He didn't hold the, f the, the strength, the power, but he didn't want to let it over to somebody else. And, but that was, this solution was out of the blue, I would say. I mean, that, that would be a deadlock, a, a deadlock if, 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 if Mazowiecki did it, uh, came to, to uh, he was, was, hadn't been elected the prime minister. I can't imagine the future without this. So I'm totally on the bright side of this. Uh, I'm totally ascribed to the, to the white legend of these events. And why do we have now so much controversies about those who are ah, yes. uh, in, in the, on the bright point. side and on no. the... We have it because um, there are a number of... Uh, uh, there are, as usual, there are some... Um, we have some haves and some have-nots. So the... Uh, the, 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 um, the transformation period was very difficult for many families, for many people, for lower strata and for upper strata as well. And the, um, but I mean, people somehow have come to terms with this at some point, but uh, there were always two ideas that 
I'm talking about ideas because I'm a historian of ideas and not a sociologist proper. So there are always two ideas which ruled the country. One was the, the myth of the new beginning and the other one was the myth of return to normality. And um, uh, on the, in 1981, the two myths overlapped. We were promised a new life, uh, back to normality, back to Europe. That was the slogan of the day, the cliche of the day, back to Europe. Even the communist candidates, uh, you know, they, they, they recalled to, the, recall to, this, to this slogan. Um, but uh, these, two, these two ideas uh, were present in every election, actually. And those who were not happy with the change and uh, with the economic hardships usually recalled on that uh, new beginning idea. That was Law and Justice Party, uh, always playing on this issue. We have to start it again, because what have, uh, what have uh, resulted from the transition was not a normal state, which can, with some, so to speak, normal pathologies, which can be treated with normal means. No, no. We have been an abnormal state, and all we can do with it is to get away with it, and to be the new one. And that, that idea was in front of the uh, Lech Wałęsa's first presidential campaign. Be, let's build a new state. That was the idea which it was uh, all present in the uh, 2005 campaign when the Law and Justice Party came to power. Let's build a new state, the new beginning, the Fourth Republic. And this is exactly the idea, the last reincarnation of the idea for the ruling party today. Uh, well, Balcerowicz, this is his shock therapy. Well, okay. But there is God in heaven, and he sent us, 25 years later, Mateusz Morawiecki, the prime minister, to launch the proper economic reform and to make the Poles as rich as the Germans are. Yeah? Uh, the, the thick line Mazowiecki drew. Yeah? But there is God in heaven. And he sent us 25 years later, Zbigniew Ziobro, <laughs> the justice minister and the attorney general, to, uh, um, um, to secure justice. Yeah? To secure justice. Justice will be done to the communists and the post communists as well. Full stop. And those people, those unhappy people, uh, were always hoping for such a, such a break. Such a break. But, I, I'm not sure if, if it worked this time, because uh, this time the, the idea of return to normality meant something more. I mean, people were simply tired with the former government, and there were some small scandals which were magnified by the opposition. And then, so they were happy to, they were happy to, 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 to be back, with the, to live in a normal state. But the, Law and Justice Party changed the, the notion of the normality in the state. Yeah? So it's no more liberal democracy. It's not a normal state. And then the point is that, that once it was be something uh, uh, which, we would, which you wouldn't talk in the family, which you wouldn't talk in, in, in open, but now the same things happen abroad. So we are not so outdated. We are not so specific. Look at America, it's the same. This make America great again, make Poland great again, make France great again, make Easterreich great again. This is the same mood. Yeah, it has been strengthened by, strengthened by, the, by the, uh, uh, what's going on around Poland. So, um, and, mm, so my diagnosis is that it, 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 it won't just happen. Uh, it, 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 it will last for some time, unfortunately. But uh, I don't leave you with the mm, conviction that Poland is, uh, is, nas is a nationalist country. First of all, Poland is a split country. Oh. Galia is as the vida in partre stress. Polonia is the vida in partre stress. 
those who support the government, the nationalist government, those, those who are uh, strongly opposed and those who uh, belong to I don't care party. And this is the third of the population. So they belong to the commercial party, to the, uh, you know, Leclerc party or uh, Jean party or, or Jean party. These are the most popular supermarkets in Poland. Mm. <laughs> 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 yes, I, I, I would like to um, say something positive for, for yeah, the end. It's, it's quite difficult. The end, yeah. uh, it's difficult because I, I, I would like to say that probably it's because the, the, uh, the democracy in Poland is so young still and so unstable. But on the other hand, when we regard this voter and this turnout, it's not that young. In fact, because they, the youngest people are not coming to, mm. uh, they are vic victims of this, of this, of this liberal cap capitalist myth and the I don't care okay mm. party. So, um, no. <laughs> oh, they belong to the smartphone party. Yeah, uh, yes. that's, that's the point. Uh, yes. I wanted to give you the chance for a final word, uh, yeah. but. <laughs> You still want it, or? <laughs> I'm not sure. I mean, it's <laughs> you know, they say that, that prediction is always difficult, as, especially as it concerns the future. <laughs> yes. So, uh, but the future is uncertain. I mean, the future is uncertain, and, and I am not so pessimistic as. Um, uh, but um, you know, who is the pessimist? The pessimist is something who, despite all the chance which show that it's going for better, claims that it's going for bad. Uh, and the vice versa. So um, there is a battle of, of in Poland, the battle over the collective memory, mm -hmm. and um, you know the young generation. The, the, uh, they seem to escape from this deadlock of the national liberal Poland. They, 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 they because they have a new interest in politics, ecology first of all. But somehow, this, even the new interest fit into the, part, the existing pattern. And because the so socialization, political socialization, uh, repeats the existing divisions. Uh, and uh, um, how we see? We see that's just, that's, I should stop at full stop at this. Yeah. So that was at least the word, full stop. Yeah. Um, so we have uh, a bit more than one hour of a break now. A chance for all of you to go out, uh, do whatever you want to do. Uh, we continue 1.30 um, uh, here uh, with the talk on Ukraine. Uh, the Constituent Congress of Ruch as a precursor to the uh, breakdown of the Soviet Union, to the falling apart of the Soviet Union. This is 1.30 here. And I couldn't check now, but if we go out now, I'm, I'm hopeful that there, there will be some sandwiches uh, served for us uh, outside. Feel invited uh, for that. And see you all back in a bit more than an hour. Thank you. Thank you.